Okay, I love this one because districts get this wrong all the time. This is our duty to assess. Now we talked about child find. Child find is different. Child find, we've got to find that child in the system, in, in our district with a disability. That's our responsibility. When do we have to assess? The, our duty to assess is broader than, than just the areas of qualification, okay? It is more easily triggered. In fact, the, the rulings on this have used this as your, as your deci deciding measure to assess. The correct question to ask is, is there any reason to suspect this student might have a disability? You do not ask, will this student qualify for special education? That's the wrong question. So what is a reason to suspect? Basically any poor grade any F ever <laughs> could, could qualify for an assessment, could meet that very low bar uh, for assessment. So that being said, where does this really apply? It applies to those SST referrals coming to you from the school sites. Guys, uh, used to be, uh, work for a district and most districts do this. The SST teams at the school sites, they get the psychologist involved. The psychologist makes a decision to assess or not assess. And basically what the psychologist does is they say, you know, let's not move forward on assessment right now. Let's go back to the SST and let's try this, this, and that. Okay. That's illegal. If you're going to have this discussion with your SST coordinator about qualification and the SST coordinator has said in the SST meeting, you know what, I'm going to take this to our school psychologist. At that point, you're making a decision about assessment. At that point, number one, you pay attention to this law, which says your responsibility, your responsibility to assess is just if there's any reason to suspect. In my opinion, a child would not be in, in going through the SST process if there wasn't some reason, if there wasn't a hint of a possible, potential, very slight disability. And so, one, I would recommend assessing. Two, if you tell the SST coordinator, no, I would like you to try these things first, you have actually, legally, assessed that child and found them not to qualify. So at that point, the parent has a right to an IEE. Also, if you do that and you do not do it in writing to the parent and to the team, you've not provided prior written notice of this decision. And so again, that's a procedural error. But in this case, it's a procedural error that does deny a potential special education student access to special education services. So that's a major flaw. Um, never deny or approve an SST referral without doing a prior written notice. Now, we should probably do a little caveat one day on what a prior written notice is because they are extremely misunderstood and it's mainly due to the, that title. Um, it's not really a prior written notice. That's the wrong wording, but we'll go over it. We'll definitely do that one day. Okay. All school districts, uh, a school district's duty to assess a student's eligibility for special education related services is also triggered by any request for special education or assessment from the parent. You're in a public school, the parent has written a letter, I would assess. That is what the California Code of Regulations says. Title five, uh, section 3021, paragraph A. I don't know how that's read, but anyway, you can look it up yourself and interpret it for yourself. A parent request 
parents know the kids better than anybody. The uh, courts are going to understand that. They're going to understand their child is, appears to be struggling. They're going to understand that the district is being a little selfish if it doesn't assess. I mean, after all, you've got a full-time school psychologist. She's only doing 150 other cases. What's one more case? No, it's not quite that bad, but here, the district's duty to assess does apply to a parent request. Now, there exists a conflict between our duty to assess and our duty to rule out general education intervention. So, the, so if the district suspects a student may have a disability, it must conduct an assessment. However, a student shall be referred for special education only after resources of the regular education program have been considered, utilized, and basically failed. How do you do that? Because your assessment must rule out general education intervention if it's appropriate. Now, it's not always appropriate. There are times when you know the general education interventions are not going to work. And I, I have told this story a hundred times about the SST team who was rushing a blind student through the process because they were told they had to do three SSTs before they could do a referral. That's a student you don't even have to worry about general education interventions on, right? You know they're going to qualify. You know a student with Down syndrome will probably require special education. Not all of them, but most of them do. Um, you know, you know a student with autism may indeed require. Uh, that's a little difficult, isn't it? Because they may require special education. They may not. They will probably require some 504 for protection. Um, and, and for accommodations, that's a tricky one. But anyway, there is this conflict. Now, I would never turn down an assessment simply because the regular education interventions have not been tried. What I would do is what's called a concurrent assessment. So you get the parent to sign an assessment plan. You elongate the assessment plan process to say 50 days. At the same time, your SST team is providing general, regular education interventions. By the time you reach that 45 day mark, when you're putting the final touches on your psychoed, you can go to your SST teams and say, hey, tell me what regular education interventions you have tried and their outcome. And that will help color the child's eligibility, your eligibility recommendations. So keep in mind, you can do a concurrent assessment, concurrent with the SST process, in order to meet both of these sort of conflict uh, in the law, both of these regulations. Okay.